While Bioshock is well over a decade old, it's still a... The game is... You know what? I like Bioshock. I wanted to play it again. Let's just get on with this already. Can you beat Bioshock with only a wrench? After an unfortunate plane crash in which I'm sure all other passengers safely got rescued and didn't drown while suffering from third degree burns, I found a lighthouse, entered the magic bubble, rode that bubble down into the bowels of rapture, and nearly got got from within my bubble. Luckily, there's a mysterious revolutionary named Atlas to guide me through this subaquatic nightmare. Unlike other, similar weapon-restricted challenges I've done in other games, the wrench is the first weapon you get in Bioshock, so you don't have to try to get through any portion of the game without attacking any splicers. Pick up the wrench, kindly break a small barrier, avoid a flaming couch, and combat is initiated for the first time. The thuggish splicer isn't at all difficult to kill, especially on easy. After being lucky enough to catch a glimpse of Mr. Bubbles, I awaken with newfound electrical powers, which must be used to open a door. Allow me to make clear what I mean when I say, with only a wrench in the video title. Plasmids can be used, but the only way I can damage an enemy is with my wrench. I can't shock them, light them on fire, shoot them, or anything like that. My first thought was to drain myself of Eve every time I pick up a hypo, but it quickly became obvious that that would not be practical to do throughout the entire game. Then Atlas explained what my goal is, find his family in Neptune's bounty. I tried leaping off the rails to get a surprise hit on the splicer below, but it didn't work. He will always be known as the one that got away. I killed a loving mother and kidnapped her adorable little handgun, saw a ghost in the bathroom, entered the Footlight Theater, and got an up-close look at how Big Daddy deals with those who wish to do harm to their little sisters. It might look brutal, but that splicer actually got a pretty quick death. I pushed onward and fought a leadhead splicer. These are tough, as they take three solid whacks to kill. The door to Neptune's bounty closed, forcing me to fight through even more splicers. You're supposed to electrocute their puddle, but I couldn't do that. Andrew Ryan then introduced himself to me and sent some goons to end me. I wanted to see them try, but they couldn't even break the glass. Then again, I couldn't either, but in my defense, I just survived a plane crash. I had to go through Medical Pavilion to find another entrance to Neptune's bounty. It was here where I did the first hacking minigame. I hacked a security bot, then immediately destroyed it because it's not a wrench. After a momentary setback, I flipped a switch and was inside Medical Pavilion proper, where I saw another ghost, learned how to ring a bell, fought the toughest enemy yet in the form of a turret, then fought a nitro splicer that was even harder to kill, got the incinerate plasmid, and was off to kill Dr. Steinman. I used my fire fingers to clear a path, someone forgot to pay their electric bill, I almost got stabbed with a knife, found the telekinesis plasmid, and was off to kill Dr. Steinman, for realsies this time. Telekinesis allowed me to catch a grenade in midair. I'm not sure why grenades come in cans, but whatever. And I saw Dr. Steinman. He seems like a nice guy. His art is a little out there for my taste, though. It took a little bit to beat him to death with the wrench, but he didn't put up much of a fight. To prove that I'm not an animal, I put his body in one of those storage drawers for safekeeping and finally had the key to emergency access. On the way there, I found a little sister. My options were to harvest her or rescue her. Tannenbaum said it'd be worth my while to save the kid. I don't know what she had in mind, but I did not want to find out. First, I tried to beat the little sister with my wrench, which didn't work. I then tried flinging a chest at her face. Didn't work either. I eventually decided to just rip the slug out of her. With 160 atom in my pocket, I could afford a few special treats. I got a health upgrade and the armored shell combat tonic. The health upgrade is self-explanatory, and armored shell reduces the damage I take. Useful, since I have to be a few inches away from an enemy to damage them. The timing couldn't have been any better, because in order to proceed, I had to kill a big daddy. And let me tell you, that was not easy for a couple reasons. The first is that my wrench does practically nothing to the big daddy. Nothing I've faced so far has taken 10 hits to kill, and 10 hits on the big daddy with the wrench barely did a thing. The second problem is that when the big daddy hits you, you're stunned for a moment, which leaves you open to another attack, and then another, and then another. That works horrifyingly well with his scream, which slows you down for a bit. Obviously, in a face-to-face -face fight, I have no chance whatsoever. I tried running and hiding behind some objects, but daddy don't care. When daddy decides it's time for punishment, you can run, but you can't hide. 
I eventually made my way back to where you get the incinerate plasmid, because there's an area there that can only be entered if you crouch, but popping out to take a swing at the bouncer wasn't gonna work either. I was low on health and was quickly running out of ideas, and then I saw it, a glorified baby gate. This small railing proved to be my saving grace, as the big daddy isn't flexible enough to climb over it. After several minutes of luring him over to the railing and carefully taking a few swings, he finally died. It was rough. I harvested his little sister, saw another big daddy, said fuck that, and let the big daddy go about his lonesome business, stocked up on first aid kits, and entered Neptune's Bounty. It was in Neptune's Bounty that I got my first wrench upgrade. Sort of. It's not an upgrade to the wrench itself, but there are a few tonics that affect the wrench. Wrench Jockey, for instance, increases the amount of damage you deal with the wrench. I also got the Target Dummy Plasmid, because it doesn't do damage, it's just a distraction for enemies. It ended up being a waste, since I don't think I used it for its intended purpose a single time. I then spoke to Peach Wilkins, who is a bit of a shutterbug. I wasn't really paying attention when he was talking. Based on what I did next, I assume he said something about taking pictures of spider splicers that were being a nuisance. Probably. I don't care. I passed by another big daddy, found the camera, and took a photo. I did think about whether or not I should use the camera, because it's not a wrench. But it's also not doing any damage to anything, so I figured it wouldn't matter. I'm not gonna waste time talking about every single photo I took. I'll just say that by the end of the game, I'd fully researched every enemy in the game. Contrary to what I literally just said, I took the three requisite spider splicer photos, passed by that big daddy I saw earlier, and got into a fight with that same big daddy. It was actually going rather well, until a second big daddy showed up, because of course I had to fight two at once with a fucking wrench. The upgrades I'd gotten ensured that I wasn't completely fucked in this fight. I could dish out more punishment and take more from them. I also discovered that I could be further away than I thought and still hit the big daddy. I lost most of my health, but come on, I killed two big daddies with a wrench. I then arrested another little sister and was off to the submarine bay. To deal with Peach Wilkins, I had to enter an area with my weapons relinquished, except for my wrench and camera. With Peachy dead, I found a power to the people machine, which has no upgrades for the wrench, because why would it? I upgraded my pistol, because you get trophies for upgrading weapons. I went back and swapped out one of my plasmids for incinerate, melted some ice, miserably failed at hacking a terminal, whacked some fish, entered Smuggler's Hideout, watched Atlas get ambushed by Andrew Ryan's splicers, fought my way down to where he was, watched his stupid family die, and escaped to the docking bay. This place is called Arcadia, and it's beautiful. Well, it was, for about 11 seconds before Andrew Ryan decided to fuck the trees to death. My goal is to get to the metro station, but something always has to go wrong, as one second I'm excited to ride the bus, and the next second I'm pretending to be the Lorax. I also beat another big daddy to death. As time goes on, these become less and less challenging. The joy of killing a brainwashed child never fades though. After sliding another slug into my pocket, I bought a few more tonic slots, bought the medical expert tonic to make first aid kits even more effective, watched as pesticides rained from the heavens, found a pretty flower, harvested another little sister, watched as Julie Langford died a probably painful death, and was tasked with gathering an assortment of items to create the Lazarus Vector. That probably could have been done a lot quicker. But I wasted all the components I gathered because I thought there would be a trophy for creating stuff. To make matters worse, my last save was a while ago, so I was out of luck. The quest to find some stuff was both annoying and time consuming. The farmer's market is an unfriendly place filled with splicers, turrets, and big daddies. I found some distilled water, obtained enzyme samples from the buzzing nightmare room, found more water, went down to the winery, killed another big daddy, found the rest of the water, at some point I found the chlorophyll solution, and went back to Langford's lab to create the Lazarus Vector. It took a while to implement. Fending off all the splicers is probably supposed to be a challenge, but at that point, getting pictures of the Houdini splicers is harder than actually killing them. Once the vector had been deployed, I was off to the metro station. I took an office chair with me because why not, right? I mean, it's no bucket, but it's still a solid piece of wooden craftsmanship. Unfortunately, wooden chairs don't like being in magic bubbles. The chair was gone after the game loaded the new area. It's probably for the best, as the next area was Fort Frolic. 
I love Bioshock, but Fort Frolic is like the Dwemer Ruins from Skyrim. Some people probably like it, but I find it boring. I had to get four very specific photographs for an eccentric gentleman who has an affinity for bunny ears. The first photo was of Kyle Fitzpatrick, who exploded rather well. After Kyle's photo was pinned to the bulletin board, I could complete the next three in any order. Supposedly, they betrayed Sandra Cohen, but I don't know if I buy that. My first stop was Poseidon Plaza, which is now a frozen wasteland. I shattered a corpse before being frozen myself. Berg guy was rude to me, which was why I killed him next and destroyed his igloo. I then killed an elite bouncer. He had a spinning hook hand instead of a drill. The red paint looked cool, but the lack of a drill made him look like an idiot. On my way to kill the next chump, I snapped enough photos to get Wrench Jockey 2. There was another elite bouncer, but I mopped the floor with him. Hector Rodriguez pretty much killed himself and Silas Cobb made me wait around for him to show up. With the four photos posted, I wasted no time by immediately assaulting Sandra Cohen as soon as he revealed himself. I got a trophy for taking a picture of his corpse, and was off to Hephaestus to take the fight to Andrew Ryan himself. Ryan sent an assortment of splicers to stop me, which did next to nothing. He might as well have sent an army of dead hamsters after me. There was a room with corpses nailed to pillars. I tried to gently take them down, but they weren't having it. Andrew Ryan steeled himself behind an electrically shut door. I searched the area for a way to get in, passed through the Hephaestus core in which I killed another elite bouncer, and harvested a little sister, entered heat loss monitoring, killed yet another elite bouncer, continued searching the area for ways to get to Ryan, killed a third big daddy, and found a giant EMP bomb. The components weren't difficult to find, mostly because the big daddies that had some of them were already dead. It took a bit of backtracking, but I found them before too long, upgraded to Wrench Lurker 2 and Medical Expert 2, but most importantly, I had the materials necessary to craft Bloodlust, a tonic that restores health when you damage an enemy with a wrench. With this tonic and Wrench Lurker 2, the wrench is borderline overpowered. I returned to that little hidey hole and was ready to set off a bomb in a fragile underwater city. But before doing that, I turned a corpse into a yo-yo. On the way to the detonation site, I fought an elite bouncer, which was a complete joke. I can attack him much faster than he can attack me, so I can restore health lost from his attacks before he has a chance to attack me again. I'm effectively a god, after fulfilling a lifelong dream of slowly turning a valve to release hot magma into water, I took an elevator to the Hephaestus core, placed the bomb, and let it do its thing. There was nothing standing between me and Andrew Ryan. While Rapture was beginning to crumble thanks to Ryan's self-destructive nature, I once again played with a yo-yo corpse, then threw some stuff at this big electric thing, which did nothing, and thought that if I ever do another Bioshock challenge, a telekinesis only run would be a pretty fun one to do. Finally, I came face to face with the man himself. A man chooses, a slave obeys, and I am 100% a slave, which is why I beat Andrew Ryan to death with a golf club instead of a wrench, tried to disrespect his body to no avail, and discovered that there was no Atlas. It was Frank Fontaine all along, as if that name is supposed to mean anything to me. Before all hell broke loose, I was saved by Little Sisters, was partially freed from Fontaine's power over me, and was tasked with stopping him. With all my previous upgrades, this was in no way challenging. Even Elite Rosies were comically easy to deal with. I had to track down a serum to completely free myself from Fontaine. I played with a Big Daddy's body for longer than I should have, searched a few apartments, got a clue for where the serum might be, tried desperately to stuff a Big Daddy into the elevator, didn't work, found one half of the serum, which had the unfortunate effect of randomizing my plasmids, entered Apollo Square, fought my way through more splicers and big daddies, fully researched nitro splicers, which got me the research PhD trophy, found the second dosage of the serum, was completely free of Frank's power over me, and the end was in sight. I had to fight my way through Point Prometheus to get to Frank Fontaine and finally escape Rapture. But before I did that, I paid homage to the wooden chair from earlier by stuffing every conceivable object, dead bodies, suitcases, canned food, masks, poles, you name it, I stuffed it into the bathysphere. It predictably did nothing. Unfortunately, in order to get my hands on Fontaine, I had to get my hands in a big daddy, specifically the suit. This was time consuming and annoying. Not because it was hard, but because the way the big daddy helmet messes with your vision gave me a headache. 
After I got the rest of the Big Daddy suit and sprayed myself with perfume, I followed a little girl around while she defiled a bunch of corpses. I'm going through this portion rather quickly because I don't want to watch the Big Daddy helmet footage for any longer than I need to. The little sister got Adam from Three Angels. I bought as many gene upgrades as I could from Gatherer's Garden for no reason other than to spend the Adam I had and took the elevator to Fontaine. This was as stupidly easy as I thought it would be. It takes less than 10 hits from my wrench to drain Fontaine's health. Then he teleports back to his apparatus, I stick him with my turkey baster and do it again. The splicers and turrets he send can be killed in one hit each. I continue to beat Frank with my wrench, he gives me a good smack, and the sisters of the little sisters I brutally murdered came to my rescue. They stuck Fontaine over and over again with their atom gathering devices. The screen faded to black. There was one last cutscene, and I beat Bioshock with only a wrench. I knew going into it that this would be relatively easy. Bioshock on the easiest difficulty is not a hard game to beat, and there are multiple videos on YouTube of people doing wrench-only playthroughs of Bioshock. Still, if you're looking for a new way to play through Bioshock, a wrench-only run is a pretty fun one to do. And that's going to do it for this video about whether or not you can beat Bioshock with only a wrench. If you enjoyed the video or learned anything, leave a like. Leave a dislike if you didn't enjoy the video or didn't learn anything. Follow me on Twitter at Mitten Squad. My name is Paul of Mitten Squad. Have a wonderful day.